Okay. Um, well, welcome. This is this has been one of my favorite things that we do at Seabury, and we've got mostly presenters. And thank you for those of you who came to watch too. Thank you for being here. Um, one of the questions that we always get it doesn't matter if it's a parent of a four-year-old or a parent of a somebody going into middle school. We always get the question about what happens after Seabury. Um, where do kids go for high school? What happens after high school? And are they ready? for what comes next. You know, this, yeah, sure, this is all fun and kids like school, but are they really, do they learn what they need to learn and are they ready? Um, and so rather than, I mean, we do a lot of trying to answer that question, but I think the best people to answer the question are the alums that are here. So tonight we have um, eight alums and a couple of alum parents that are going to share um, their stories with us of, and they're in just kind of different places in their journeys. Um, and so um, I'm going to not take any more time other than to say thank you to all of you who are here to present tonight. We'll go through sort of each one. We'll give each person a chance to tell their story. And then at the end, if there's questions, we can take a, a few minutes for questions or we can hang around and visit just a little bit. So, all right. So with that, um, Monty, are you ready to go first? Are you are you up, up for being first or Remy or do you guys want to arm wrestle or? Okay, real quick. Here we go. <laughs> okay okay monty all right so i'm going to hand you this and this is this is uh monty hawkins you can tell kind of your story but you are a freshman in high school this year all right there you go okay perfect perfect i'll pretend my head isn't rotating uh, uh. there you go Slide down. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, I'm Montgomery Hawkins. Um, I went to Seabury since first grade. That's how I met Remy here, who's going to present next. He's going to be a lot less prepared than me. And, I mean, obviously, if you're watching this and you attending, you're a student, or you are a student attending Seabury um, alum, right? No, I'm saying for people watching this recording. Oh, yeah, yeah not just for, you know, Allison here, but if you're have a student Seabury or you are a student Seabury, obviously, you know, it's very good. And of course, you're wondering what's going to happen afterwards in high school, or maybe if you leave in elementary or middle, but for high school, I would say there are definitely classes that maintain the rigor, the rigor of the classes you have at Seabury, but there's a lot you're going to have to get used to, like period bells. You're not used to those, you know, you're like used to, oh, let's walk downstairs to the next class, but it's a lot faster paced I would say when you get to high school um you're not probably you're probably not gonna get bullied or anything I'm not and I'm a little uh quirky so that's not really a concern but definitely make associations with people because you need more power to succeed um you should definitely also be in contact with your counselor you probably never heard that term before but you will probably have a counselor at your school so if you have any issues with your classes make sure you have their email address um know all your teachers well because i mean they're fresh teachers you're probably used to having the same teachers you've had for years or you know just gotten to know them better but since it's a whole fresh set of teachers you should know them well um high school is pretty fun it's a lot different than middle school and you'll probably be prepared but just make sure you're ready for like different forms of work and different teachers and whatnot so yeah that's my uh performance Remy is uh, drooping in sadness, so let's make sure he has to experience this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that light is super bright. What did you, other way? So counterintuitive. My name is Ann Hawkins. I'm Montgomery Hawkins' um, mom, and I've got some pictures that I put to, sent to Sandy so that you can know. First thing that's going to happen in high school is you're gonna get all of the wrong classes. So you have to be prepared to, I don't call it bribe, you know, I just call it um, reward. Your school counselor with a bag of candy that's voluminous, in, not voluptuous, <laughs> big enough that it can't be ignored on her desk, right? So you do that and then um, she's gonna give you all the classes that you need and then you need to take flowers 
because she's going to dictate the rest of your high school career and what courses you get. And then, then as soon as you see grades hit the grade book, you email a compliment and a compliment only. There's no buts in a compliment. There's no and. There is only a compliment. And then the teacher will email you back a compliment. And then everybody loves each other. And that's how we get A's, kids. Okay. Take me to next. And then you're, so, okay, you're like, okay, so academics is sorted. We're good. We've got the right classes. We're getting our good grades. But what about the social part? And so you say, we need to go to an event, a school event. Let's go to a football game and take me. Well, actually, you can see that's Monty way over there. And where's mom? What do you, do, is the mom picture show or no? Take me to next. Oh, there might not be a mom picture. I'm, I'm here, right? And that's, that's, yeah, yeah, okay. So you're feeling good. You're like, okay, the social, I'm pretty okay with it, yep. Then kind of like mom, <laughs> this is the latest member of the well-dressed ninth grade mafia here. So um, there's a lot of systems that you're not used to. You'll have an ID card. You'll have to get an ASB sticker. That's one thing you learn from going to the football game is you have to pay a lot more if you don't have an ASB sticker. All of those things are new. There's a lot of offices. Your kid has never gone to the attendance office. They've never gone to their counselor, like Monty mentioned. All those kind of um, systems that come with a bigger, bigger school. Go ahead. But fear not, your kid is still going to hang out with their Seabury friends, maybe geek out making a timeline game of computer, uh, the history of computing, yep, on a school night, yep, yep. And then you'll just wonder, like, where did my baby go? <laughs> Are you putting it? Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. That's smart. Wow, that's bright. Um, hello, I uh, I'm Remy. I go to Sammy. Uh, I have been at Seabury since uh, kindergarten. Um, and a lot of a lot of stuff I'm going to say is a little bit different than Monty because I feel like Sammy is a, a different school in a lot of ways, but a, a lot of it still applies. I think one of the most important things is uh, to get to know your teachers and to actually understand some stuff about them. If you can connect with your teachers both socially a little bit, but also you should know how how they function a little bit because that can help you a lot to know uh, what you have to do in their class or um exactly how you should communicate with them that sort of stuff which can be beneficial if you're trying to get better grades or generally just enjoy classes more as well um and then the second thing the the thing that i think for me was the biggest thing is uh as monty said like period schedules and that stuff um coming from seabury is a very disorganized school and more organized than sammy and less organized than sammy in both at both at the same time um the big difference is having so many more people, like you don't know where everyone is at a given time, right? Uh, the social aspect, you have like different friend groups in different periods and that stuff is a lot different um, because you, you no longer can look around and be like, okay, if I see this person, I know where they are. And if I don't see them, they're downstairs, right? Like people could be anywhere um, and you have to like schedule stuff better. You have to know like if you're gonna meet with someone at lunch, like where everyone's gonna be. Um, especially applies to uh, Sammy and Soda since the campuses are basically just an area, right? a park or the downtown. Um, you kind of need to communicate with each other more about where you're going to be. Uh, and I think that is honestly the biggest difference for me. So uh, that's honestly about it, I think. It's honestly pretty similar, at least for me. And if you're not fully, like if you don't think you're fully ready for it, it's pretty quick to get acclimatized to it. At least I found it was. Yes. Good luck. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Montgomery. <clears throat> I'm dad. <laughs> <laughs> Representing Remy's father here. Um, what we found in the transition from private school to public school is that we had some apprehension um, about what that transition would look like and whether 
the shift from the very small and very intimate classes that Seabury brought as long, along with the, the very much hands-on support that we found throughout the years um, is that we were concerned about getting lost in the masses or into the crowds and, um, and some real honest worry about whether there would be peer problems or differentiation issues with such a wide age range. Um, Remy is in the younger side of the class. And so um, based on some of his skill sets, he's got classes where he's mostly with juniors and seniors, and he's got classes where he's with most of the rest of the freshmen. And what we found through Seabury is that he's phenomenally good at self-advocating. Um, and that, that ability to speak for himself and to raise issues and to stay on top of things um, has served him really well, I think, in the transition. And he went real quickly from nervous to fairly comfortable with the school. So we feel like Sammy is a great fit for a Seabury kid who is definitely focused within those uh, specific groups of study. Um, but it, it's a freshman year, so we'll, we'll wait and see. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, now Ryan, Ryan's our experienced high school person. Ryan's a junior this year. And so I'll let you. Yeah, I'm there old. You are. Yeah, I'm old. All right, hey, no offense. No offense to all the adults in the room, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I am Ryan. I am currently a junior at the Science and Math Institute over at good old Point Defiance. I'm a forest child and I graduated class of 2021 from Seabury. It was like the year after COVID. And I was there from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. And I highly recommend it. It was a great experience. And when I got to high school, I felt, how could I say, uh, ready, prepared. I, it was something very new and very strange because since I had gone to such a small and as I said, intimate and very close knit community such as Seabury, it just seemed like, wow, first day of school, there's 300 people here. I am, um, uh, what's going to happen next? I feel a bit overwhelmed, but that feeling very soon went away. All my classes felt easy. It was all things that I, I guess, had done before here at Seabury. Project based learning we did, the ability for me to like, take more advanced math classes here at the middle school if I wanted to. Well, I just went straight into more advanced math classes. It was a simple transition as that. And through those little, I guess, perks of being a Seabury kid, I just kept on going up. I wouldn't say that it, high school has been easy by any stretch of the imagination. Completely, obviously. There have been some rather hard classes, I must say. <laughs> EP Chem. But it's... It's all been wonderful. At the beginning of the year, we had this thing called uh, Running Start. Or no, Strong. First look, thank you. Third time's the charm. And it's where the incoming freshmen come in and take a look at their brand new campus and realize that they're probably going to get lost on the trails a bunch. But during that period of time, uh, it came to my attention that I was being used as a role model for both what to do and what not to do because the teachers were saying, yes, look at Ryan. He has overloaded his plate once again. And I am taking like, three science classes and two math classes, I believe, out of my eight class schedule. And honestly, while uh, a bit tough but fair, I would say that I've been handling myself fine because of lessons that I've learned both in freshman year, sophomore year, and here at Seabury. Yeah, it's, it's been nice. I highly recommend Sammy for any like aspiring high school students who want to go someplace where they can have a sort of Seabury-like experience, but a lot more kids. It's great. And, and are you near the point where you're starting to start think about what's going to be next? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> I am currently taking an internship through our internship program at SAMI for, for a program 
at the University of Washington in collaboration with NASA and the Museum of Flight called the Washington Aerospace Scholars. And it is, I guess, me having a look at what the field of aerospace engineering could look like for me. And I guess if I had to pick an answer, that is what I would say. Right now. Yeah, that or chemistry. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Um, our kids go lots of different places for high school, um, public and private. Uh, sometimes they do the whole high school experience. Occasionally we have a student who does an early entrance to college. We have kids who do some high school and then some running start. Um, everybody kind of finds their own path. And I think for us, it's helping kids find the place that's gonna be the best fit for them. And, and those can look really different, um, but, but they're finding their way. So thank you, that's awesome. Um, Emma. Emma uh, is a freshman at Santa Clara University this year, graduate of Annie Wright uh, High School, Annie Wright School, and so I'll let you tell the rest of your story. Yeah. yeah, so I just finished my first quarter, just did finals week. I actually only had one in-person final, which was a perk for me. I went into it having to declare my major. I am currently enrolled in engineering physics, which I thought I wanted to do, but I got in and I got really intimidated by everything I had to do. Um, applying to colleges was really weird because I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I just kind of chose engineering and then my favorite class. So I really enjoyed physics. So that's where I got engineering physics and it's not turning out to be what I thought it would be. So I'm currently trying to switch over to civil engineering to see if that's more what I wanna do. So it's totally fine to get to school and feel like you're not in the right place because I immediately freaked out in my chem class, <laughs> dropped it after the first day and went to an English class and I feel way better there. So I contemplated doing an English major, which is totally different and that's fine too. So I had a really good first quarter because my mom also advised me to take a fun class. So I took ceramics and that's actually where I got a job working, cleaning the studios because of my teacher there. And I also made a lot of my really good friends there. So I really suggest taking a fun class your first quarter. It really like chills you out for the most of the part because I was really, really scared and homesick, crazy. I came from here to California and it was really like, I'm still struggling with it, but it's okay, it'll pass. Love you, mom. <laughs> um, but for that, I feel like middle school here was very, chill like you go your own pace high school was much more monitored going back to college is much more you have to decide everything for yourself so you have to get up walk across campus to your classes so be prepared for that but that's going to happen no matter what so yeah Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. right we're going to kind of jump ahead i'm going to let derek go next so Derek is one of our more experienced alums <laughs> and also <laughs> and also yeah right yeah and also an alum who serves on our board of trustees or did and now is on our finance, finance committee. committee yeah yes Still thank working. you I'm here um yeah so I thank you I was um so my last year here was 2002 was anyone here when the middle school was in Browns Point yeah real, I'm <laughs> I'm dating myself. Yeah, so it's that long ago. Um, so I'll first off say that I think Seabury's changed a ton since I was there. Um, like from what I can recall, 20 years ago is very the, the traditional like science, math, humanities and rotate classes and, you know, teacher gives a presentation and we watch kind of a deal. Um, I've came here and visited a couple of times with you and um, just kind of observed classes and stuff. And it's, I've been really Im impressed with how immersive it is and how I guess innovative it is and just I uh, think provides for a whole you know uh, unique learning experience that why it might not work for all people I think works for um, you know I think it works for some and um, and yeah it was fantastic it was just fantastic so what I will say um, about my experience is Again, it's so much different than it was 20 years ago, but in terms of preparing for high school, um, I was scared to death when I first went to my high school classes. Um, there were 12 people in my class, and um, I just remember thinking, like, oh, gosh, my, 
it's going to be going from 12 to 250 was crazy. And then the school filled with a thousand kids. And um, one of the things that helped me out the most was um, I got involved in, there's a couple of things before the school year started. So I was, is there band here still at Seabury? Is there band music? music? Okay. We, yeah. So I, I was in band when I was in the middle of school and I played clarinet. Um, and then, so at Bellarmine, I did the marching, I went to Bellarmine. And so I did the marching band and I think three weeks before school started is when we started with practice. So, um, doing that. And then I played soccer as well. And so we had this time like three weeks before where I could meet people in a small group and just kind of ease into it that way. And that was super helpful. So by the time the classes actually started, when there were a thousand people there, I felt super comfortable. Um, already had, you know, a good group of friends. And um, so I think that put my uh, emotions at ease a little bit right from the get go. But um, I guess one thing I will end with is, uh, I don't know, we talk a lot in our finance community meeting about we compare, you know, other private schools in the area, you got St. Pat's and the St. Charles and the Annie Wrights and, and that kind of stuff. And it's like, you know what, those places are great for some people like, um, I guess if you want to, if you do want to go the more traditional route, Life Christian is another one. But I, I was really, really, really impressed from what I saw here. Just again, the immersiveness, people working together, teachers encouraging rather than just teaching. It was, it was really, really, really cool to see. Um, and I kind of wish I had experienced that because it wasn't like that 20 years ago. See, and that's a testament to you too. You did a great job because you weren't here when I was here. So, yeah. So, um, really cool to see where the school's gone and. Um, yeah, hope to be a part of it for for some years to come. So, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. We love staying connected with alums and kind of hearing the stories from from the back in the day. So, we're gonna uh, go back to college now, and uh, we're gonna Allison. Are you there? And are you ready? Yes, I'm here and ready. All right. Let me just change this so we can. Look at you. There we go. Okay, so this is Allison Stewart, who just graduated from Colorado State University last spring. Um, and uh, I'll you just tell your story. You can talk. Okay. <laughs> okay, she's coming to us from Colorado tonight. I'm in Utah, but oh, uh, never mind. She's in Utah. That's okay. Uh, I'm Allison. I went to Seabury from 2006 and then left in seventh grade in 2014. Yeah. And then I went to a public high school in Federal Way, Washington, and then I graduated from Colorado State with a degree in neuroscience, and now I'm working at the University of Utah as a neuronal tech, um, like I'm making neuron cultures pretty much, and just turned in PhD applications, so fingers crossed. Um, I will say the first thing, Seabury gave me the freedom to make my own decisions. I definitely moved out here for skiing, so I'm excited to do that. But um, mainly Seabury really fostered the way that I learn. I think it really encouraged, I'm a very visual hands-on learner. And I, if I didn't go to Seabury, I don't know how I would have learned that about myself. And it really structured me to be able to advocate for myself in high school and even in college um, with getting the resources that I need to learn the way that I can. Um, and I think Remy's dad advocated or talked about self advocating, and that's definitely a skill that if you have that leaving Seabury, you're going to be okay because I had to advocate for myself a lot during public high school to get the classes that I needed and to make sure that I was on track, um, and not relearning things that I already learned so young at Seabury. Um, also being close to teachers was something that was definitely easy to do at Seabury because the classes are so small. And I think the teacher really knows your strengths and weaknesses and getting to high school, classes are huge and that's not the case. Um, so that was kind of a culture shock of trying to learn how to be close with teachers in a way to get what you need. Um, but it also fostered like, some of my college professors are now like we're friends on Facebook and LinkedIn and we talk fairly often. So 
I think having that structure so young in life really fosters strong connections and networking will get you very far. So being close with your professors and teachers will create, like, yeah, a great environment. Um, yeah, as for the transition to high school, it was difficult, like going to a 2000 uh, student school, it was a lot harder to navigate and having bells between classes, but I think I'll forever appreciate the way that Seabury fostered learning and um, just, yeah, the hands-on experience and being able to be so involved in the community in Tacoma and to have that freedom during middle school to like go out on Thursdays and go to the farmer's market, also taught about sustainable food. So yeah, I think that's it for me. That's awesome. Allison, thank you. Um, I'm curious while we while we have you um, and and for the rest of you who are like well even even if you're in high school are you still in touch with Seabury friends Did the friendships you made at Seabury have they oh yeah lasted? yeah Elizabeth one of the girls that I went to call or Seabury with was working at Garmin so like we talk about running and bikes all the time um, yeah I'd say I'm friends with at least 75% of the people that were in my class and like a year younger and older than me. And like my brother Hayden, um, is best friends with Sandy's son still. So I think you stay connected and I think it really fosters, yeah, a community that like Lars asks me how I'm doing probably twice a month and it's lovely to have that community, especially since I've moved away. Um, so yeah, no, they're they're friends forever for sure. Anybody else want to? I saw the heads nodding. Does that register for some of you? All right, Allison. Well, thank you so much. Let's give Allison a hand, and then yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let's change this here. Okay, and so now Astrid. This is Astrid Anderson, and Astrid just graduated from Lewis and Clark. I always want to mix that up with, um, it doesn't matter, whatever. Anyway, okay. Lewis and Clark, here you are. <laughs> Thank you. So I actually was in the same class as Allison. I stayed and did my eighth grade year at Seabury too, but then similarly went to a large public high school in Federal Way. Um, I think there were about 1,600 students where I was, about 350 in my class alone. Um, and just this past spring, I graduated from Lewis and Clark College, which was approximately the same size as the high school that I went to, which was pretty interesting. Um, I will say that I think Seabury prepared me more for college than it did for high school. I felt more of the skills that I learned at Seabury transferred into my college classes better. Um, that flexibility to go and talk to your professors, talk to your teachers, um, kind of that advocacy that everyone's been talking about. I feel like the payoff is a lot higher in college and definitely that um, self-starting ability is definitely more valued. Whereas in high school, I had also, I started Seabury in second grade. So I'd gone to a public school before that. So the whole bell and transition periods didn't throw me off too much um but i definitely recommend doing something like an extracurricular i did a sport in the fall that let me meet people a couple weeks before starting high school that was a big help especially going to a larger school um in terms of classes um going into freshman year seabury over prepared me for my classes and i definitely had to find other avenues to stay attentive in class. So I did a lot of kind of my own work on the side. I would do um, work for other classes in a different class. Um, so I had all my homework done before the end of the school day um, for pretty much all of freshman and sophomore year. But that gave me a larger opportunity to pursue extracurriculars during high school. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of extracurricular work, lots of clubs, lots of sports, and all of those things look great on college applications. So that definitely helped. 
Um, between like post Seabury high school, college, and now kind of as I'm working and also looking for jobs, um, just being able to stay motivated in yourself is a really great quality that I got from Seabury. And I think a lot of other Seabury students have also gotten that. And like Allison was saying, networking, the ability to network and be comfortable talking to a wide range of people is probably one of the top skills that you get from Seabury. And it pays off not as much in high school, but later down the road is really, really important. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I am doing mouse and rat neuron cultures. So I do surgeries on the rats and mice, and then I um, use their brains and kind of extract the neurons from it and then keep the neurons alive. Um, our lab is focused on, we found this gene that, or my boss found a gene, I did not find it, um, that is essential for memory. Um, and pretty much if we knock this gene out of mice, you can't, they can't remember anything the next day. Like they can learn something in the moment, but they can't remember the next day. Um, it's really awesome. Like my PI has been featured in National Geographic a couple times. Um, but yeah, it's kind of not for the faint of heart, I would say, but it's it's a job that will probably get me into grad school, I'm hoping. So yeah. And Allison, what are you hoping to do in grad school? Um, I'm hoping my undergraduate thesis was focusing on how high fat diet affects chronic inflammation and neuroinflammation. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to work on a project in at Colorado, University of Colorado Boulder, um, looking at how uh, traumatic brain injuries affect sleep and um, just, yeah, neuroinflammation around that, mainly focused on microglia and the immune response, so. Awesome. That's what I'm hoping for. Or I'll say in Utah. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Allison. And thank you to all of you who are here in person. And thanks to those of you who braved the storm tonight to come out here. So um, I hope this has been helpful and um, appreciate your time tonight. Um, we'll, let's see, I guess I'll stop the recording and we'll um, feel free to visit as we're on our way out tonight. Thank you.